of empathy to create a kind of society has come into such sharp focus, hasn't it, during the pandemic? It's been an explosion of perspective taking as we imagine what somebody else's lockdown has been like, a, an intensive care nurse, a lonely neighbour short on food. And this in turn has led to an explosion of cooperation and caring that could, I think, point the way to a more hopeful future. But of course, empathy can also be in very short supply. Even before COVID, there were major concerns about society's empathy deficit with this scary rise in hate crimes and online bullying. A society low in empathy is a society in deep, deep trouble. Major thought leaders identify empathy as a force with potential to overcome that empathy deficit. And here's one of my very favorite quotes from Barack Obama. Empathy is a quality of character that can change the world. Psychologists also talk of empathy's power as an absolutely key factor in child well-being, a critical foundation for strong relationships. And without those, no child can thrive. We founded Empathy Lab in 2014 as a not-for-profit and our mission is to inspire the rising generation to drive an empathy movement to build a less divided world. And just look at the climate change movement, see what young people can do, how they can lead the way forward. Our strategy is based on two key areas of research. First, that empathy is a learnable skill. We're not born with a fixed quantity of it. Only 10% of our empathic capacity is genetic. 98% of us can improve our empathy skills at any point in our lives. And I think that is a very inspiring challenge to all of us. The second area of research is a riveting growing body of research from neuro and other scientists showing that stories are a training ground for understanding other people's emotions. As we read, our brains experience the story as if it's happening. And so in identifying with book characters, we learn how other people feel in real life. And it was this research which sparked Empathy Labs Foundation. Five of us came together to explore whether this potential was being taken seriously enough in society and education. We've created three key tools to help children develop really strong empathy skills, an annual book collection, a schools program, and Empathy Day. We've been working with 11 pioneer schools since 2015, experimenting with wiring empathy into every aspect of school life and especially using books and reading more consciously to build it. Actively teaching empathy has significant results as this assistant head reports. After just one year, Kenilworth Primary saw a significant drop in behavior incidents. And empathy education can be profoundly attitude changing which this lovely quote, another of my favourites, from a year six girl in Great Yarmouth sums up. I used to think refugees were different from us. Now I don't. So on to Empathy Day. In 2017, the first, it was really just a twinkle in our eye, but has rapidly turned into a significant national event. This chart shows the growth over 2017 to 19, um, massive growth in grassroots engagement, library involvement, for instance, has gone from 19 public library services in the first year to 92 last, and this year it's 120. And the social media response has really taken us by surprise. Last year's campaign, trended at number one on UK Twitter for five consecutive hours. Empathy trending for five hours. This is a campaign, a movement run pretty much by volunteers. We have the tiniest of teams and there's certainly no advertising budget, but there's clearly something about that empathy message that is massively resonating. And there's huge heart in this growing movement 
partners who really get it and stay passionately on board, like the Scouts, Nine Empathy Circle Publishers and today's hosts, FMCM, who have come on board with pro bono support. So this year is the fourth Empathy Day and what a year to be having one. We're aiming to trigger a new national conversation about empathy, why it's so important and we want people talking about it, experiencing its power, crucially putting it into action. The day focuses on using books to help us step into somebody else's shoes and we want everyone to read, connect and act. For the first time it's going online and we've been blown away by the way leading authors and illustrators have stepped up in the cause of an empathy drive. Mallory Blackman, Cresta Cow, Rob Bidov. So whether at home or school, children can join in with author role models as they lead wonderful activities like Joseph Coelho leading empathy charades and Robin Stevens and Joe Cotterill leading a listening switch activities so we can all practice listening 100%. We've introduced a new family uh, pack during a new countdown fortnight and the family pack is being really really picked up and we'd love you to help push its use during this last week before Empathy Day. It's created by my fellow founder Sarah Mears and it has 14 creative activities to do at home. It's been designed to be as inclusive as possible so everything can be done if necessary with just a pencil and scrap paper. At this totally unique time for families these activities really help them understand, explore and practice empathy. Lovely things to do like detecting feelings in faces or making empathy awards to book characters. Then to ensure that every child has access to empathy stories. There's an empathy read aloud with author readings from our book collection and eight empathy shorts, original very short stories from leading children's writers. Plus an absolutely wonderful bonanza of authors and illustrators responding to the Read for Empathy theme to provoke that national conversation. 16 new illustrations in our illustration gallery and 11 bloggers musing on empathy and writing in a blog tour that kicks off this morning. So that's a right old canter through the plans. Before handing over to Anjali, I just want us to pause to imagine. Imagine that coronavirus could be a tipping point where we choose to leave an era of selfishness behind us. We want Empathy Day to contribute to that tipping point so that every day is an Empathy Day. And if you think you can help us in any way, big or small, please talk to us afterwards. So now I'm going to hand over to the very special Anjali Rauf, who with Sita Brahmachari, is leading the final section of Empathy Day, which focuses on the most critical bit of it, really, which is putting empathy into action. I'm Jali. Hi, thank you so much, Miranda. Hi, everyone. My name is Anjali Ralph. I'm the author of a book called The Boy at the Back of the Class and another one called The Star Outside My Window, um, both which feature um, children uh, who are going through quite a lot and uh, both written in the hopes that the children reading it and the grown ups reading them will also um, begin to understand the the positions of those kids. Um, now, the reason why I love supporting Empathy Day and um, everything that Miranda and her team are doing is because right now we are living through not just one moment of history, I believe, but two. Um, with, alongside coronavirus um, and our fears for nurses and doctors and understanding what teachers today are going through, teachers have had to go back to school, even though many of them may not feel safe. Um, parents sending their children back to school, even though they may have doubts about the fact that, you know, of, of our government or what uh, medical experts are saying. All of these feelings are um, coming up, are also being mirrored, I think, um, right now in what's happening in America and what's happening with the Black Lives Movement, um, Black Lives Matter Movement. Um, so this week, in particular for me and a lot of my friends, both here and in the USA, has been a merging of a realisation that empathy 
and what can happen if there's a lack of it in a community or for a community might result in um, fears and violence um, and uh, fear of the other or fear of the difference or fear of um, this person that might look different to you or might sound different to you is one of the biggest things um, that I think is is you know is the topic for tackling um, we are living through two moments of history and we need to have a well where we can dip into to understand other people's point of views um, and also uh, begin to discuss the things that we're frightened of and understand from a very 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 basic um, point in order to be active on it in a positive way um, now I'm just going to bring up some books that I read as a child, um, which I think really did inspire me to start thinking outside my box. And I'm going to go back really like a long time ago to when I was tiny um, and bring up the Little Grey Rabbit series. I don't know if you can see that because my windows are very bright and Winnie the Pooh. Now I'm bringing these two books up because aside from everyone knowing hopefully who Little Grey Rabbit is and Winnie the Pooh is, um, these books were my, um, I suppose, uh, touch touching stones for understanding that animals had feelings and that animals um, uh, went through things that human humans might do. They had emotions, they can be hurt, um, they might need help. And these then le led me on to read Charlotte's Web and um, Black Beauty. So empathy begins right at the very beginning. I remember reading these books and being heartbroken um, over the fact, for example, that Owl's treehouse fell down and that he didn't have a home to live in, um, or that you know Little Grey Rabbit was hurt by something that somebody else had said. So all th that was kind of the foreground of my, of my reading life. Um, and then kind of growing up into primary school years, um, and moving in on there I had amazing teachers at school who read the most brilliant books and um, but the ones that stuck out to me were always Roald Dahl books now Matilda and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory feature kids that aren't really um, your obvious heroes you've got a boy here who's living below the poverty line and you know living with a family who is literally starving um, and then Matilda here you've got someone who's actually in a quite an abusive household and um, at a quite an abusive school so these characters um, also started to get me thinking about um, kids who might be different, kids who um, might not have the things that I had um, or uh, were imagining a better world for themselves. Um, again, uh, these were the kind of um, fire, the sparks um, to thinking outside my own box. Um, and I think more recently there's been just to tie back to Black Lives Matter and uh, women's rights in particular and what I do in my day job um, these kinds of books where women's stories and stories from around the world are being brought back to the forefront these are the absolutely necessary foreground for empathy we have so many wells of stories that are not being heard and I think those stories not being heard or discussed is what's leading to um, people not being able to understand or uh, not being able to um, fathom what it is another person might be feeling, why they might be feeling angry, or why they might be feeling scared. Um, now, as I said, I wrote uh, a book called The Boy at the Back of the Class, and um, on Empathy Day, myself and Sita Brahmachari, who's also an amazing refugee rights activist, um, will be talking together to discuss the positive ways that you can use empathy, how empathy is the foreground, the absolute foundation of any action you might take to be kind to someone, to smile to someone, um, to go out marching on behalf of someone else that is completely different to you, who's living a completely different life to you, but who you understand, who you want to understand and who you want to help. Um, now, uh, the reactions to the boy at the back of the class have been uh, quite surprising and beautiful and um, I have teachers and librarians to thank for all of that because I don't know how any of that happened. Um, but uh, just last week on Thursday, I was emailed by my agent and she said uh, a mother has written in and her son has just finished reading your book and um, he has decided to write a letter to his local MP. So this is 27th of May, so just a few days ago. His name is Sufyan. And this is a letter. And I just want to give you an example of how kids are ready. They're so ready to take on a story, to understand deeply what they're reading and to then move on from not just reading and understanding, but action. And they're hungry for that action. So this boy has written, uh, Dear Stella Creasy, my name is Sufian and I live in Wolfstow and I'm in year four. I have been reading a book called The Boy at the Back of the Class. It's about a refugee called Ahmed, who is a nine-year-old boy and has to start a new school. This made me remember how I felt when I started a new school and how frightened I was to make new friends. Refugee people like Ahmet leave their homes and leave precious things and memories behind. They need to flee from their country and unkind people who take their money and hurt them. They are forced to live without electricity or toilets in the camps that you 
uh, are give them and there are now even babies who have to live in these camps if you if your baby had to live in a camp how would you feel if you can think about that and get back to me with something that you might do to help refugees i'd be really grateful um now this boy, uh, nobody told him to write that letter. His mum had no idea that he was doing it. But um, once he'd done it, he sent it uh, to his mum. He presented it to his mum and said, I want to send that to Stella Frisi. So there are children in the world right now who are seeing what's going on, whether it's coronavirus or Black Lives Matter. They are seeing what's happening in their communities and their schools, and they need places to go and discuss what they feel about all of that. What is the right path to take to help people that they might see being hurt? Um, and I think Empathy Day and all the resources that it's offering people and children and their parents and teachers and librarians is a real push for us to be able to confront what's going on right now and um, confront a lack of empathy in maybe our leaders and and um, in certain peoples that we might need to really think about as well as how to take that and make it into a positive action um, so that's my waffle um, and <laughs> gonna end it there um, but I hope that everyone I think I hope and I know I feel deeply in my heart that more and more people will be hungry to understand um, and to take themselves forward in a positive way uh, with regards to acting um, with empathy so yeah let's do it I'll mute myself now Thank you, Anjali. I think I think we'll all agree that was very um, welcome, welcome waffle. Um, <laughs> I greatly. love the let's do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bo. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think we can open up to some questions now. So just to remind everyone, if you do have a question you want to ask, there's a chat um, button function at the bottom of the screen. If you can't see it immediately, if you hover at the bottom of the screen you should have a more option which will allow you to bring that up um we've actually got sita here oh, um yeah. who's raised her hand so sita i'm just gonna allow you to talk and i can do that so if i say hello because would you well, like she to hasn't talk got her microphone on oh she hasn't got a microphone on if you wanted to say hello oh hello? now she has <laughs> I'm not, I'm not very good at the tech. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear oh, you. Yes, welcome. <laughs> well, well, hilariously, I didn't know I'd raised my hand, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sita, will you introduce yourself? Oh, well, it's still lovely to hear you, Sita. <laughs> Can't wait to do um, Empathy Day with you. Anjali and I are going to do our, uh, do our um, recorded chat, aren't we, later on today. It was so fantastic to hear you speak, Anjali. Yeah, I'm Sita. Um, yeah, I just, so much of what Anjali said really just resonates so much um, during this time. I had a, a Zoom with a number of um, uh, other authors, Patrice Lawrence and Miriam Halami last night for, for Miriam's birthday and a number of other authors, Savita Halami. We were all talking about what this, this period has actually meant to us as writers and considering um, our own work and also considering you know the way teachers I'm, I'm sure there are teachers uh here in this meeting and the way the way the way um the lack of empathy has been shown to various groups of people in our society yeah. during this time as well as you know we go out on our streets and um and see you know incredible shows of empathy from um children and people of all generations one of the things that's really moved me in this period is the way that the youngest children have put their teddy bears in the windows. Um, their very, very precious toys are looking out onto the world. And for me, that is such a fantastic symbol for Empathy Day, that the youngest, youngest child can look at you know, the emotion of, as Audrey said, an animal's face and start to read what, what that, that creature, that animal is feeling. And these little, little, um, little teddy bears in the window i don't know every time i go past them i feel so emotional because i think you know that that's somebody who's woken up in the morning and put their teddy bear to look out onto the world and for me that's you know the basic thing um about the process people talk about the process of reading and we're talking about you know how you can build empathy through through reading stories but also i personally as a as a, as a human growing up and growing up and growing up every single story that i write I'm sort of my world is expanded because you know, the characters that I think are going to be are going to be the characters that are going to lead the way. It's sometimes a completely other character that comes forward and speaks to you. And for me, the process of, of exploring empathy is like this incredible treasure trove that you never stop learning all through your life. Um, and, and that's really what I, you know, what I 
I, I do every story that I, I, I write, uh, that's kind of the process that I go through. And children often will ask, you know, what do you think the key skill is to be a writer? And, um, and you know, they sort of expect you to say, you know, be good at li read a lot, be good at literature, all those things. But I say, actually, it is the process of empathy. It is the process of learning empathy, and it is the process of um, taking time, the gift, giving other people the gift of time to really engage with them and listen to them, and somehow step back, step out of your own shoes, and also step back in order to step into their shoes. Because we, whoever we are, we all come with a kind of set of expectations and judgments, even though we try not to, about other people based on all sorts of things which may not be true. And I think the idea of, you know, this thing that we hear all the time, which is not true, we're all in this together. But actually in terms of empathy, the one thing that we're all in together is none of us are always going to get it right. And none of us are always going to approach another human being or situation and think, well, I, you know, I'm very empathetic. I know what this situation is that I'm looking at. And I suppose the, the main thing about, for me, is being, you know, reading has given me throughout my life an ability to, to always remember to stay open to the, other, to the other person that I'm engaging with or the other person's story. Mm. Sita, um, Anjali, there's a question um, about the posters that um, form the kind of end of Empathy Day, which is the kind of action bit. And just to explain the context that um, it's on page 18 of the family activity pack, which we really, really want everybody to be using. Um, and we're asking everybody to make an empathy resolution poster and put it in their window so that every day can be empathy day. And Anjali and Sita, can you just say a little bit more about how you're approaching that? Um, so with myself, I'll be approaching it in a very Blue Peter way. Um, so I'll, I'm going to go out and run out and get some colouring pens because I just realised yesterday I didn't have any. Um, but I'll be uh, making my empathy resolution um, and just doing a very colourful poster. I'll also be using the magnifying glass that's as a symbol of Empathy Day um, as my logo um, and just sticking it up in my window. I don't know what it's going to look like yet, um, but uh, <laughs> I can promise you it... Um, will either be interesting or will make you want to, to not look at it. But um, <laughs> I'll be doing my best to make it as colourful as possible um, and stick it in my window. I think Sita's got a more um, more uh, classy poster. Not at all. Not, well, actually, yes, but not because I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, um, I don't know if any people know um, the story that Jane Ray and I worked on called Worry Angels, which is actually based on um, our work together at the Islington Refugee Centre. And it's a kind of art room that is, has, has been created for children who have anxiety about going to school. And um, the, the, the fantastic teacher that, that works there called Grace, she creates worry um, angels for all of the children that pass through her kind of homeschool learning space. And um, so Jane and I got together and we thought it'd be really wonderful to create our, um, our uh, empathy resolution that people, so many people are thinking about others that they can't see across generations at the moment. So, um, so our empathy poster is to show you how to make a worry angel from the story. Oh, lovely. And I'm holding in my hand, you can't see this, but we'll see it later, um, the most exquisite Jane Ray. I'm just in love with Jane's work because somehow you look at, at the face of a Jane Ray character and, and you, just, it, it, you just feel so much. And I've got a little boy angel in my hands, which I'll reveal to you all later. Um, and the idea of the, the worry angels is that you write your wishes for the person that you're either worrying about or also for yourself and then hang these little worry angels in your window. And so the idea, I mean, I've been worrying about my mum a lot recently. Um, so the idea of me making a worry angel for my mum and hanging it in my window, sending her a replica one and her hanging it in her window, um, we're hoping is going to appeal. Sounds really lovely. Thank you, Sita. I'm just going to move on because we've got <clears throat> a couple more minutes and a few more questions that have come in that um, it would be great to answer. But thank you very much for coming on. It's been nice to have you be able to contribute. <laughs> thank you, Sita. Thank you. Okay, we've just got a couple more interesting questions that have come through. So, um, Joe Cotterell. Hi, Joe. Thank you for joining us. Has asked, 
Do you think the combination of COVID and the US riots, high awareness of racism will catapult Empathy Day into people's timelines more than ever before? Or are you worried that the message will simply be buried under the weight of the awful global news right now? Well, I hope that it will catapult it. I think it's up to us to catapult it, that there is a, that there is a day now in the year where we can think about all of this and why it is that um, uh, Black Lives Matter movement, um, as well as what's happening with COVID and the mistrust and the anger around all of that um, and what's happening with our government here. Um, I think it's up to us to catapult it. And I really hope that um, it really, you know, we can do so. Um, I have no doubt it might get lost in timelines, but I think it's just up to us to push it. And I think when you add kids' voices to something, it really becomes something, you know, unexpected. So um, uh, I'm really hoping that we can we can push it up there with all the rest of it and just show that there's a there's a something else we can do about it. We sometimes um, get approaches from journalists if it's if the hashtag is trending, um, and I think that's something everybody could do that would be very simple is just to really blitz social media so that it does trend. Last, last year, it trended over Donald Trump, who I think it was last year was in Korea. Um, and so I, my dream is let's fill the airwaves with talk of empathy, not of hate. And um, could I just pick up Ashton Amber Ivett's question about what publishers can do more? Yes, I just already to... doing a lot. Um, but Amber, I think what would be really powerful is for publishers to think: How do we translate social media pushing into real homes and schools? And this week, the Family Pack um, is a very, very powerful mechanism for doing that. So I think if anybody knows families or children, if they can really point them in the direction because there's, the activities look very simple, but actually they're quite profound and um, give an amazing platform for families to be talking about what the word actually means, why it matters, and then to do lots of really fun things around character activities to kind of help children really take all that on board. There's quite a few questions here about um, the recording today and the presentation and making those available, quite a few people interested in those. So are you able to tell us, Miranda, where people will be, be able to access that? Ooh, well, I guess we can um, put it on our website, can't we? Um, and then that's probably the, the simplest and easiest way um, is we're hoping we've recorded this and, yeah, we have. <laughs> uh, and certainly we can share um, what I said and the PowerPoint slides. Yeah. Um, also, <clears throat> are there any other practical suggestions for homeschooling pupils for Empathy Day itself? We have already yes, shared mean, your I, family activity pack. There's, I mean, the, the, the day itself will be online live on our website um, and there'll be a couple of things happening on other platforms like Rob Biddulph's doing a, um, a special empathy draw along on his platform which is going to be amazing we can't tell you what it is but it's really really great um, so you need to um, come online on empathy on empathy day push everybody towards our website it's not we're very conscious we don't want children online all day so there are um wonderful kind of author impetus things and then support materials to go away and do it so joe stevens and uh, joe cottrell and robin stevens are modeling this listening exercise and then there's a listening a set of listening resources on our website like listening vouchers for if you're in need of a good listen you print off a listening voucher and give it to the person you want to listen to you um thank you um sorry, sorry just to add to that i also think because there are going to be kids who can't be online all day or they don't have the resources to be online um so the other thing that you can do is to present them with um a reading material that they can perhaps just sit and read and actually have a think about uh, characters from a different point of view or imagine themselves as that character um or pick up their favorite book and discuss why it is that that character is their favorite so um there are lots of things that you can do to to relate literature that they're reading um, to Empathy Day. 
that's a really good point. Yeah. Um, Abby Jones asks, um, would you say the content you're going to cover online for Empathy Day would be suitable for both primary and key stage three pupils? Yes. Um, I mean, if you, I, I think it very much depends how you approach it. So Joseph Quelo is, is, for instance, is leading an activity on uh, called Empathy Charades about reading emotions because um, helping children name and recognize and understand emotions is an absolute key part of building their empathy skills. So that could be taken as a kind of primary activity, but actually it could very well spark a much bigger discussion at key stage three. Um, Sita and Anjali's empathy resolution posters are, you know, that's surely all of us can make empathy resolutions, the listening switch, all of us could do with getting better at listening. Um, so yeah, I, it's, it's a lot of it is primary focused, but also an amazing springboard for all of us. And um, for people who might want to access the sessions after the day, are they recorded or will they be stored somewhere? Do you mean this today, the, me and I'm Charlie think, speaking? I think it's the, um, <clears throat> the day. actual Empathy Day sessions themselves. Yeah, the we're get, it will be, um, it will stay on our website so that people who haven't been able to join in um, on the day can continue to access it. And we're also going to have a hashtag, which is every day is empathy day. Um, so we really hope people will kind of follow through with activities. Okay. Um, there's a really nice um, question from Scott Evans here, who's a primary teacher in South Wales and says, Oh yes, that Scott, that hello. We <laughs> <laughs> recently <laughs> had a visit from Anjali uh, a couple of months ago and it was phenomenal, phenomenal and the children are all still talking about it. Oh. Um, and you would like to ask um, if you have one tip for encouraging empathy in the classroom with children, especially during the current circumstances, what would it be? And, and secondly to that, if you could recommend just one book at the moment which promotes empathy, which would it be? Just one book, Scott, you're killing me. Um, OK, um, so one tip. So uh, one tip, I suppose I would say to children in uh, schools or being homeschooled is um, I think it would be just to have a discussion with someone that they love about something they're they're frightened about because I don't think we have enough we don't um, give kids enough space or we don't present them with enough spaces to talk about stuff that they're frightened um, and then to go into discussions about why is they're frightened um, of whatever it is they're afraid of um, and then perhaps to have um, uh, give them enough leeway or enough um, space for questions around fear um, questions for uh, where that fear is stems from and all, then to go forward um, and try and understand from all angles where that fear is coming from. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm hoping it does. Um, and with regards to a book, um, so I'm a huge fan of Trevor Noah and I know that his Born a Crime has been, has been presented and reprinted for children. Um, and that book hits on so many issues that we are dealing with right now, um, especially for children who um, are uh, children of color um, and who might be experiencing things that other children in school won't be. Um, I think it's a beautiful book. The children's version is absolutely staggering. Um, it's as staggering as the, the grown up version. So I would recommend Trevor Noah's A Born a Crime to, to every school child in the world. And my very quickly, because I know we um, mustn't hold on to people for too long. <laughs> it would be um, there's an amazing Sesame Street video about what empathy actually is, um, uh, with Mark Ruffalo, and it's um, I think that's well worth a watch because you what we have learned is that you can teach empathy, you can teach really young children what the word means and why it's so important and why it's the ground of kindness because unless you can really understand somebody else you can't be truly kind to them so i would start with it's empathy day what the hell is empathy well watch sesame street and i i mean <laughs> picking one book scott really that is mean but if i um, had to I think I'd probably pick The Rabbit Listened um, by Corey Durfield, who, who does a reading of it on our platforms, 
because it's a beautiful description of the power of really listening and not chipping in with advice, which is what I do the whole time. And just, it's very helpful reflection on how we can really listen well to each other and not keep jumping in with our own points of view. I think um, we are, we, we have run over quite a bit, but we had so many good questions that I wanted to make sure we answered them. And I think I'm just gonna do this uh, one final one from Katie Jones to end on, which says, uh, where will the online activities be based, social media or the website? So the actual kind of Anjali and Sita, um, for instance, and Mallory and Cressida um, doing their thing will be on our website. Great. And there's obviously loads of activity also on social media. But www.empathylab.uk is the place to head on Empathy Day. Great. Well, um, thank you everyone so much for joining. And thank you to um, Miranda McKerney, founder of Empathy Lab, and Anjali Ralph, who is uh, one of our fantastic authors. And we hope you all have a lovely week. And Bye. we're really excited about thank Empathy you. Day. <laughs> thank you. We are. <laughs> Bye. Bye everyone. Bye.